So this is my nearly finished motor slash generator uh, ready for the conference, the energy science and technology conference I'll be presenting at. I put all the electronics down here. Well, all the electronics, it's mainly just a um, Arduino and a single transistor over there. All the wiring is underneath. And so the top looks nice and clean. I have uh, one potentiometer to control the delay of the pulse and one to control the duty cycle. There's the two drive coils and this time four generator coils. And that matches uh, the design that uh, Adams uh, showed us uh, quite well. Uh, these are also laminated cores, so that's also part of uh, the original design. So uh, let's uh, give this guy a spin and see uh, how it performs. So on the generator output I currently have a full wave bridge rectifier and a smoothing capacitor of uh, 2200 uh, microfarads. Um, and what I have hooked up is a current meter and a 12 volt 1.08 watt um, yeah, computer fan. So let's see if we can uh, make that spin. This is an unloaded test, 27 volts on the power supply and we're going at about 2100 RPM at the moment at a 26% duty cycle so that's quite impressive for the fact that it's experiencing drag from these four generator coils but this is uh, open circuit so uh, there's no load connected See about 2130, we're still climbing slowly, but uh, that's about it. So now let's uh, hook up this load. Now we have the load connected and you see it's a totally different story. We're only spinning at 740 RPM, drawing about 70 milliamps and yeah, the fan is spinning. But. Uh, yeah, this is of course not great performance. 70 milliamps, it's not a whole lot since we're putting in 250 milliamps at 27 volts and right now uh, based on this speed we're probably getting about 8 volts out so at 70 milliamps so that's really not a very good performance. So let's uh, see how we can change this. Of course, uh, we could get more out if we increase the voltage. 35 volts, you see it's speeding up. You hear I'm still having issues with vibration, that's why it's also on these uh, bubble things. And I'm, I have some rubber ordered, so let's hope that will help. So you see now we're at 1200 RPM, but I had to increase the voltage significantly. And now we're Pulling 95 milliamps, and yeah, the, the fan is spinning uh, pretty uh, fast now. But still, the performance is not amazing. So let's try something else. The motor is spinning a lot better now. I hooked up a 100 ohm resistor and 8 LEDs in series. We're drawing about 21.5 milliamps, and the motor is spinning at 1700 RPM. It was pretty decent, but of course the load is very light. Okay, we kept the load the same. Eight LEDs and a 100 ohm resistor, but we added a 470 microfarad capacitor and a diode as per the low drag generator designed by John Bedini and Peter Lindemann. Now we are actually drawing about 37 milliamps and we're spinning at 1800 rpm so we're going faster yet we're drawing more current now instead of measuring the output current I'm measuring the output voltage so you see I have about 20 volts and we had about 36 milliamps drawn at this voltage because we're at about the same speed about 1800 rpm so that helps you determine the uh, output in watts, which isn't, again, very impressive compared to the input. Although 
you can't really trust this uh, amperage because it's a um, spiking voltage, a pulsing voltage, so uh, you might need a different way to accurately measure that input voltage or amperage, but still. Um, I can power loads with this, but it doesn't seem to be the most powerful generator ever conceived. And the efficiency at this point, as far as I can tell, is definitely not close to 100%. I short-circuited this uh, generator output. As you can see, I'm skipping the LEDs here and the 100 ohm resistor. So it just goes through the capacitor, the diode, and back in a loop. And yeah, that causes... Oops. That causes a significant slowdown. I had to even, um, this is 800 RPM, but I had to increase the voltage to 36 just to uh, keep it going. But uh, as you can see, I can short circuit it this way without uh, making it stall. Now let's see what happens if I short circuit it by circumventing also the capacitor and the diode. What the heck? I short circuited it completely now. And somehow it's spinning at 1830 RPM. What the heck? And if I remove it, it goes even faster. Yeah. That's with an open circuit. But yeah, short circuit. At 30 something volts. And it just keeps going. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what to make of this. So you saw I was a little confused about those results. Uh, but at least it's something exciting to look into a bit more. And uh, yeah, the fact that I had a bit of a hard time powering strong loads with this generator setup um, doesn't mean this is the end of the story because there's still a lot of stuff to try out. For example, uh, Robert Adams really makes it clear that the best way to actually switch the coils is to use his um, unique star wheel commutator system that he designed. And so what I've done is I've drawn over it in Adobe Illustrator, as you can see, and uh, this will allow me to get it laser cut and uh, out of brass, for example, so that I can try out that switching method, because according to Adams, this is also what will allow you to um, recharge the source batteries. Um, then on top of that I should also uh, try to use the Adams feedback what he calls it so just the collapsing magnetic field a bit more like he does in this circuit and there are tons of other ideas uh, especially also coming from uh, John Bedini on how to harness the collapsing magnetic field um, to the advantage of the motor so I'm gonna try that out too and on top of that, I've also been researching something that not many of you will have heard about. It is the Adams thermoelectric motor generator. Here you see a 
picture that hardly anyone has ever seen before. It's a picture that was taken by Robert Adams himself, one of his later designs. You see it has a water tank on top and that is because this motor, unlike the pulse motor that I'm, I've been building so far, which runs cool, this motor actually generates a ton of what he calls etheric heat. And this heat manifests itself at the stator cores. Uh, that's why you see that there is a lot of plumbing going on because he runs the water through the course just to cool it and also to harness it because then he can boil this water and use it to run steam turbines and according to Adams this motor was incredibly powerful and he even had designs going up to the megawatt output range. So I'm super excited to dive into this motor some more. I'm already designing it in SolidWorks so that I can make a an attempt to a replication because not many people have heard about this motor and it offers tremendous potential. If you want to know more about this I would also like to show you my Patreon page that I set up if you want to help out my research because this um, model that you've that I've been showing you has cost me over a thousand bucks already parts and everything and, and getting it laser cut is just very expensive so I, if you want to help out and uh, also get early access to content but also exclusive content like around the thermo uh, motor generator, uh, then definitely uh, check out my Patreon page. Uh, you see that there's already some posts waiting for you. For example, this one contains uh, three images of the thermo motor generator, and I also have some posts uh, on how wire gauge affects power output of these types of motors, and there's more. So definitely go check it out and I would really, really appreciate any help uh, you guys can give me. I will share a lot of uh, cool stuff on there that I can't post as a video really or that is too short for a blog post on my website. So definitely check it out and uh, already thank you so much for just watching my videos and uh, clicking the like buttons and subscribe buttons because that is already helping me a ton. Yeah, so thanks again and have a great day.